Many visitors to the MagLab get a big charge out of our electronic shop. That's where they get to see our Tesla coil, an instrument that shoots purple sparks into the air. This demonstration is like something out of an old Frankenstein movie. It's shocking, death-defying, and mystifying. How does this thing work anyway? The key to the Tesla coil is the, the resonant transformer part of it. Hmm, resonance, transformers, two big science concepts right off the bat. We'll explain the resonant part first. Most objects have a natural resonant frequency. Resonance is the tendency of things to oscillate at a maximum amplitude at certain frequencies. There are different types of resonances depending on the type of waves involved. There's mechanical resonance, illustrated by the girl on this swing. If she pumps at the right time, the swing reaches a maximum height. If she pumps at the wrong time, it won't. The right time is the swing's resonant frequency. Something similar would be when you blow air over the mouth of a Coke bottle and makes a whistle. That is the resonance of the air column inside the Coke bottle. That's acoustic resonance. There's also electrical resonance, and our Tesla coil is a perfect example of this. Inside this device is a tuned circuit, which is made up of this coil of wire connected to this capacitor, which stores electricity. When Lee releases that voltage into the circuit by stepping on this switch, the electricity courses through the coil and does what electricity always does. It creates a magnetic field around it. That field keeps growing until the capacitor is fully discharged. The energy from the capacitor is now stored in the coil and in the magnetic field around the coil. But the magnetic field around the coil, dependent on the running current, starts to collapse. This has the effect of inducing another current, a phenomenon called electromagnetic induction. This current runs through the wire until the magnetic field disappears and the opposite terminal on the capacitor is charged up. Then the cycle repeats itself at its electrical resonance frequency, some 200,000 times a second. So what does any of this have to do with the cool purple sparks? Here's where it gets really interesting. This power supply, which feeds the capacitor, has a resonant frequency, 200 kilohertz, or 200,000 cycles per second. This tuned circuit has a resonant frequency too, 200 kilohertz, and this large coil, which is part of a second tuned circuit in this instrument, has a resonant frequency as well. But you already know what that is. Uh, approximately 200 kilohertz. And with a Tesla coil, what we're doing is exciting the natural resonant frequency of the secondary coil. Together, the two tuned circuits create a special type of transformer called a tuned resonant transformer. But what is a transformer anyway? Transformers transfer a voltage from one circuit to another via electromagnetic induction. A primary coil, linked to an AC power supply, experiences a magnetic field around it that, when close enough, induces a current in a secondary coil. When the secondary coil has fewer turns of wire than the primary, it takes on less voltage. That's a step-down transformer like the ones used to turn the high voltage and transmission lines to a voltage you can safely use in your home. If the secondary coil has more turns than the primary, it will take on more voltage, a step-up transformer. In our Tesla coil, the primary coil has just 10 turns, while our secondary coil has 1,200. Definitely a step up. It takes 2,000 volts and steps it up 125 times to 250,000 volts. Where's the capacitor for the secondary coil? Well, the ring at the top, called a toroid, is one terminal, while the ground serves as the other terminal, and the air in between acts as the capacitor in the circuit. That's where those 250,000 volts go, creating an electrical field so powerful it ionizes and lights up in the air. If that sounds familiar, it should. And when you see a lightning bolt, that is the high voltage from the lightning bolt ionizing the air. So basically what we're doing is generating an electric field strong enough that it ionizes the air and then you see the glow from the ionized air. The Tesla coil can't compare to the hundreds of millions of volts in lightning, but you can do some pretty neat tricks with it. The electric field is strong enough to light up the fluorescent tube without any wires attached to it. Look what happens to the argon gas inside this light bulb. 
Now for the death-defying part, what scientists technically call the skin effect. The higher the frequency, the more the current tends to travel over the surface of conductors. And because of that, I can actually let the Tesla coil, the spark from the Tesla coil, jump to this metal rod. And it doesn't shock me because it doesn't penetrate into the nerves. It goes over the surface of my skin. While most of the electricity is running over Lee's body to the ground, some penetrates it, but at a frequency nerves aren't sensitive to. Still, even though Lee likes to make science fun, the Tesla coil can be dangerous. All electricity is dangerous, should be treated as such. We always tell people, don't try this at home. After all, you wouldn't want this to be too shocking. <coughs> well, at least it isn't mystifying anymore.